Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Zoller, and today I wanted to share with you about the effects of Spanish colonization on the future of the United States. As you can see on this map, the Spanish colonized a large area of North, Central, and South America. The reason they have a lot of land is due to them being the first to start colonizing the Americas. First come, first serve. For this video, we will be focusing on this area here in today modern Mexico and the southern states of the United States. The way the U.S. looks today is the result of countless separate events and a series of conflicts among rival groups. These groups were the Spanish, French, Dutch, British, and Native Americans. All these groups left their mark on the history of the United States. To understand that history, we need to understand these groups' points of view in exploring lands in North America. As you learned last year, students, the Spanish conquered the Aztecs and Incas when they began exploring and colonizing in Central and South America. The Spanish found many treasures among these people and hoped to find more in their future explorations. Hernando de Soto set out in 1539 with 620 men and about 230 horses. They landed on the west coast of Florida, made their way northward into what is now Georgia, North Carolina, and Tennessee, then struck west through present-day Alabama and Mississippi. This group often fought against the Indians they met, attempting to enslave them and demanding whatever of value they could acquire. De Soto's expedition cost nearly half the men their lives, and the survivors did not return with treasure. Although this future area of the United States was destined to become the wealthiest part of the Americas due to the production of cotton, the Spaniards turned away from this area, disappointed not to have found other peoples like the Aztecs and Incas with treasure. They left behind epidemic diseases, a reputation for hostility, and the enslavement of Native Americans that would continue for generations. At about the same time, Francisco de Coronado, another conquistador, was searching much further west for the legendary Seven Cities of Gold. An unreliable informant had told him that they rivaled the Aztec capital for wealth and magnificence. These cities were said to be so fabulously rich that the streets and houses were decorated with gold and jewels. When the Spanish heard the American Indians tell similar tales, they became convinced that the seven cities of gold were somewhere in North America. His expedition trudged across the burning desert that now marks the boundary between Arizona and Mexico, then into Texas and parts of present-day Kansas. Like DeSoto's group, Coronado's men warred against the local Indians, showed extraordinary brutality in destroying Pueblo villages, and came away empty-handed and discredited for not finding treasure. Juan de Onate demanded the winter food supplies of the people of the Acoma Pueblo. They resisted and killed 11 Spaniards in a skirmish in 1598. Onate retaliated with a massive counterattack in which he killed about 800 and even brutalized the survivors by cutting off one of their feet and forcing them into slavery. Spanish settlement of the river valleys of the southwest, particularly the Rio Grande, was accompanied by the building of mission churches and an effort to turn the local Zuni, Apache, Navajo, and Pueblo peoples into Christians. Only much later, in the mid-1700s, did the Spaniards begin to Christianize California. Many Native Americans ended up dying from diseases the Spanish missionaries brought. Also very important to the future of the continent was the Spaniards' introduction of cattle and horses. It was troublesome for the Spaniards to get their horses to the New World, but those horses that made it to the Americas were their best weapon. They had already proved to be a source of terror to the Aztecs and Incas who faced them in battle. Cortez himself declared, After God, we owed our victory to the horses. Very early on, horses began to escape, so the horse frontier spread across the west much earlier than the line of settlement. 
In the 1600s and 1700s, Plains Indians began to domesticate these strange new animals and learn how to ride them. This meant they could travel greater distances, hunt buffalo on horseback, enjoy a diet richer in meat, and more easily go to war against each other. Anthropologists now recognize that the arrival of horses was transforming the way of life of Plains Indians a century and more before they encountered white men. The same was true of cattle. The lack of fences in the New World meant that Andalusian cattle, brought from Spain in voyages after Columbus's first, soon began to stray, turning wild and spreading in great number across Texas and the Southern Plains. They too would eventually have a profound effect on the history of the area, creating the raw materials around which the mythology of the Texas Cowboys would grow up in the 19th century. The Spanish also introduced their religion, Catholicism, their Spanish language, and cultural influence through their arts, architecture, foods, and music that spread across the areas they colonized and conquered in North and South America. Thank you for watching.